Thank you so much for sneaking me in. Oh, it's gonna be well worth your while, don't worry. If, of course it's important. I would never wear polyester if it weren't important. No, 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 don't wheel them in yet. I'm not ready, I'm not ready. I have to make myself lovely. Um, Where's my beverage? Can you please bring me my beverage while I wait? Thank you, thank you so much. Oh. Okay, that's just set it there. Set it there. Okay, you can you can wheel him in now. I'm ready. Do I look nice? Can you please tell me I look nice? How about how about can you say you look fabulous? I'm gonna make it worth your while. Just say it like you mean it. Oh, I love that. I haven't heard that in days. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please bring him in. Um, quickly. Yes. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> oh. Carl, hello. Hey, I am so happy to see you too. Wow, of course we can't get any closer because you know. Yeah, actually, um, hmm? do I want, what? No, I don't want your pudding cup. Thank you, sweetheart. No, you, you keep that. See, once you've touched it, I'm not supposed to touch it. Of course, you know I love pudding. Of course I do. Of course, because it's your favorite thing. That means it's my favorite thing. Yes, we will have plenty of time to eat pudding later, but right now, there's some things we need to talk about. It's really serious. Oh, well, I'm doing the best I can under the circumstances. Oh, oh, it's boxed wine. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's going to go down harshly. So, sweetheart, sweetheart, first of all, did you get, did you get the special package that I sent to you? What do you mean they wouldn't let you open it? <sighs> well, anyway, I had in there the jigsaw puzzles you asked for and the playing cards. And I made sure they were all decontaminated. Uh, so they wouldn't let you open it? They're spraying it down. What do they think is wrong with me? I delivered it myself. I drove myself here. <laughs> I'm very upset. I had to drive myself. Fortunately, see, fortunately Brad was still around and he could drive me before, but now he's quarantined. He's staying with dad and all he's doing is sending me virtual hugs. Virtual hugs are not enough. I'm struggling. I know, I know you were right in the middle of telling me how you were doing, but this is very important. Um, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. Your wife is not doing well. No, not Mabel. She died in 1967 and you guys were never technically married. Remember? It was just a civil ceremony. We're actually married. You see, I have this giant ring and that proves it. Remember we got married? Oh, I know. I know your memory issues are a problem. I know. I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't mean to, you know, highlight them in this way, but you have to look after me. I mean, what's to become of me? During these trying times, we have to think about the most important things. And that is, what am I going to do without maids? What am I going to do without my staff? Do you know, I had to paint my own nails. I'm still traumatized. I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Please tell me again that they're lovely. I am so desperate for compliments. No one pays attention to me. I try to get the mailman to look, and he just puts the mail, he just puts the mail in the box and drives away. I can't get anyone to look at me and talk to me and tell me how great I am. Oh my goodness. Oh, 
well, I did, I did bring you your happy pills, of course, because that's just the kind of person I am. Even when I am dealing with the harshest times ever, I remembered your happy pills. They, um, they have what in them? Fish oil? Well, that's just lovely. Well, heaven forbid you go without your fish oil. Before I give them to you, though, what are you going to do for me? Well, I had a few things in mind, actually. <laughs> Let me show you what I had to do to get in here, first of all. Okay, they're not allowing visitors. So if anyone asks you other than Cheryl, you didn't see me, okay? Well, I made a special deal with Cheryl to sneak me in here. But even then, we had to take special precautions. I had to dress up as an old person. Do you know how traumatizing that is for someone as youthful and beautiful as me? I had to dress up as an elderly woman, which I will, of course, never be. Even when I'm old, I will never be elderly. I had to put on this wig. Do you see this? I had to put this on my head, which, of course, I had to make sure it was at least shiny. That's some beautiful shiny hair with that mesh cap under it. I put on that, and then I was... I was forced to put on polyester because I had to look old. So, um, I put this on. Tanya left it for me. It was her grandmother's. So I had to put this on. Look, look how long it is. It's so gross. I had to put that on and to hide my jewelry. I had to wear my, um, my fur. You know, because I'm not going out without my jewelry. And then I had to keep my hands in my pockets and no one got to see my beautiful jewelry or my nails. What is a world without that? It's a world without sunshine. That's what it is. The world is being denied the gift of me and I won't stand for it. So I have a plan for our future. I do. Oh, I do have something for Cheryl. Don't worry about it right now. I have your, I have your item. Don't worry. I had to give her some anti uh, sanitizer just to get her to sneak me in here. I have the other thing. Don't worry. It's in my Gucci bag. No, you can't touch it. I have a plan. But for that plan, I'm going to need some things from you. And that's part of the reason why I'm here today. Yeah. Um, is, uh, you're right-handed, right? Is your right hand functional today? I know sometimes it gets a little floppy. Oh, it's your left hand. Excellent. Well, that won't be a problem. Look, I, um, I've drawn up a three-point plan to help us recover from this disaster and this terrible time. And I need you to sign it for me, okay, sweetheart? Carl, if you love me, you'll do it. Look at me. Look how lovely I am. I went to a lot of trouble to come visit you today just to make sure you're all right and to get this thing. Look, we'll talk about it, okay? But let me tell you what I've been dealing with up to this point, okay? All the maids are staying home. All of my staff is staying home. Brad has informed me that he's not coming over anymore. He's staying at Trad's, at Dad's house. I'm all by myself. I'm in that big rambling estate. No, Copperhead estate. You have a second estate? I'm your spouse. You're supposed to tell me this. Since when do you have two estates? Who has two estates? Go away, Cheryl. What's it called? What? I've never heard of that. No, no, I'm just, um... I think I'm going to take notes, though, actually. I think this might be important. We might do an addendum to this agreement. Bellamy? Bellamy Estates? Bellamy Mansion? Oh, I love you so much. Carl, where, um, where can 
could I find Bellamy Mansion? Nathanville? Brad, Brad's not here. I have to do it myself. I'm going to have to look it up myself. Hmm? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm just uh, making a grocery list. Why do I not know that? I know everybody there. Well, oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, We can go ahead and just get some signatures. You know what? In fact, I have a couple of blank sheets of paper, and all they have on them are just some, some little lines. They don't mean anything. And they have a little notary stamp on them. And I'm just going to get you to go ahead and sign those. They don't mean anything. It's just, um... So you can practice your signature. You know, it's important to keep your signature, you know, you, you have to practice it every now and then or you'll forget, you know, how it's supposed to look. So we'll just call it signature practice on some blank pieces of paper. <laughs> okay, that's wonderful. No, I don't want any pudding. We already had that discussion. You, uh, you hang on to that pudding, okay? You, you enjoy it. It was chocolate. You like chocolate. No, plus you don't remember. I don't eat. <laughs> it's okay. You can forget every now and then. Oh, you can taste the wax lining. My taste buds are not going to survive this apocalypse. Well, I've had quite a bit of time to wander about that estate by myself. No, it's okay. It's not completely your fault. I just, um, you know, the first time I called you to tell you everybody was leaving, it seems like you could have done more to, um, find somebody who was willing to come stay with me. Like, maybe if there's somebody who had already had it, and maybe they were immune, you know, I don't see why they have to stay home. <clears throat> it seems like they could come stay with me if they're immune, and there's bound to be somebody out there by now who's immune to this thing, you know? I'm just saying that you could have gone to a little bit of trouble to try to find someone um, who would be willing to come serve me. I had, I had to learn how to make coffee in a machine. Did you know they have machines that do that for you? Like you don't have to do anything really? I had no idea. It's amazing. I had to drive. Do you know how long it's been since I drove? was very scary. It's very traumatic. I've spent hours in front of the mirror trying to keep myself enthused and happy. And it's it's not been easy. It's not been easy at all. I mean, you know, on the news, you hear about all the doctors and the nurses and all of the first responders and these people that are you know, like struggling or whatever. They never talk about people like me. And I'll be honest with you, it hurts. It really hurts that it, we are the forgotten victims of all this. I've lost all my people. I've lost all my students. I've lost everyone but you. And I have to sneak in to see you. So, I have a three-point plan for when all of this blows over, which I'm sure it will. And that's going to get us back on top, sweetheart. Oh, well, of course, part of the plan is getting you out of here. I mean, it would be terrible if you were just trapped here forever by a, a very cruel spouse who just didn't want to see you get out. I mean, that would be awful. Imagine all the liberties she could take with your money if you never got out. Mm. No. Of course, that's part of the plan. That, that would be... um. Yeah, that's step one. That's part of step one. See, we'll, um, once it blows over and everybody's healthy again and everything is back to normal, which I'm sure will happen very quickly, we will come break you out of here. Oh, who cares about your doctor? We don't care what he says. We'll get you out of here, and then we're going to go back to Copperhead Estate. And we're going to enjoy some good time together. We'll play some shuffleboard, take naps. You can have all the pudding you want. I know here they ration you to one a day. When you get home, you can have all the pudding you want. Diabetes be damned. <laughs> and um, so we're going to get you back home. And that's 
that's when we're gonna start spending lots and lots of money. <laughs> well, what's the point in having it if you don't enjoy it every now and then? Speaking of money, since you brought it up, you know, I've been a little cash poor lately. Yeah, no, 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 don't give me cash. See, I can't touch it because, well, I don't know where it's been. You know, I, I don't like to touch dirty things anymore. Mm, no, no. Um, I, it would be great, though, if you could just have some money transferred over into my account. Oh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is when the accountant calls you, you give him the accounting, you give him the account number and the routing number and all that pesky little information, he'll take care of the rest. That's all you have to do. We're trying to make this as simple as possible for you to avoid stress during these trying times. I don't want to see you stressed. Oh, I'm sorry. Your happy pills. So they have fish oil in them? That's lovely. Before I give them to you, though, um, I have to ask you something. And this, this is going to sound very petty and awful, but just hear me out. How much do you love me? I'm Charity. Charity, your wife? Remember? Giant Rock? Here comes the bride. Well, anyway, look at me. How much do you love me? A lot? Great. Okay, well now you keep that in mind when the accountant calls in a little bit, okay? You're going to get a call right after I leave here. Now his voice may sound kind of feminine, but that's my accountant and he's totally going to ask for that information. And then, and don't worry, my accountant will take care of the transfer. So what, um... Would you say you loved me $100,000 worth? You would? Oh, $200,000 worth. Oh, you are the sweetest man. I would touch you, except I'm not allowed to. <laughs> okay, um, well, no, see, it's very important that I have this money because I don't have anything to do. All I have to do is shop online at this point. I don't have anyone to order around, and I don't clean. So, I'm thinking about seeing if I can find robots to do it, like they had on the Jetsons. Do you remember that show? Of course, I'm not old enough to remember it. Um, I saw it at my grandmother's house once. Yeah. Totally. Well, I, I just, I need some money to spend because I don't have anything to do. And see, if I had $100,000, I could get at least a few things to keep me occupied. You buy some cleaning robots, maybe a hoverboard. I always thought I would like to try that. And while I'm at home alone, might be a good time to do it. Yeah. And maybe a car or two, you know, just something to play with. I don't know. But $200,000 would be really great. You know what would be even better? $500,000. Now that, that we can work with. And that might be enough to tide me over at least for a month or two. And then if it's still going on at that point, I can always put on this horrible disguise and sneak back in here again. And we can talk about how much you love me a second time. Of course I'll come see you. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I'll be, oh, mm -hmm. I'll be here every day that I don't have anything better to do. I mean, every day. Yeah, totally. Yes, Cheryl. She wants her thing. Just a moment. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. See? Told you I had it. This is cootie spray. And my maid Barbara made it for me right before she scampered away. She mixes this up all the time. Did she use did she ever use cootie spray on you, Carl? She used to use it on me on occasion whenever I would go out with my friends. And you know, sometimes I would have male friends come over and we would jump on the trampoline together. And then after we got done jumping on the trampoline, you know, which is totally all we did. That's all we did. She would spray me with this. 
Oh, she says it kills everything that it comes into contact with. It kills all kinds of germs and things. Come to find out all it is is water with a little bit of bleach in it. But look, you can spray and decontaminate with this. I know you've run out of everything. That's why I made sure to bring the cootie spray. Now, I don't know what I'm going to spray stuff with. I, you know, I was told, here, take your, take your cootie spray. I was, I don't need anything. No, I definitely don't need any more of that wine. It's, um, it's substandard. I'm really hoping that by the time I come back, you'll have something a little bit better. Maybe something that came out of a bottle. Oh, this is box wine. Okay. I know box wine when I smell it. Yeah. Thanks to my mom. I'm very familiar with it. <clears throat> Thank you. Ugh. These are hard times that we're living in, I'm telling you. I, I don't know how I'm going to survive it. So anyway, you were just saying you were going to you were going to give me five thousand dollars, transfer it to my account. We were just talking about it. Oh my goodness, Carl, you are so funny. It's so cute how you forget things. But yeah, totally, you're going to get a call and you need to transfer $500,000 to my account. Oh, the accountant will take care of it. When I, when he calls you, when he calls you, he'll take care of it. There you go. There are your happy pills. That's going to make everything okay. Oh, Brad is fine. He's forsaken me and I'm very angry at him, but he's okay. As far as I know, he and he's learning to play piano and he said that he doesn't know if he wants to continue being my assistant anymore. And I don't know what to do about that myself. I've come to realize that I depend heavily on Brad and I've taken him for granted these last few years. Did I tell him so? No, I'm not going to give him that kind of leverage. He don't want a big raise or something. I'm not interested in that. Now, if we survive this, I might tell him, but I'm going to give it a little time to settle in, I suppose. So, okay, step one, get you out of here, go home, play shuffleboard, and spend lots and lots of money. Well, I don't mean to spend it indiscriminately. I mean, I have a plan, for heaven's sake. I mean, I wouldn't just dash off and, you know, blow massive quantities of money for no reason. No, no. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Now think about it. If the pestilence goes on all summer, think of all the water parks and the amusement parks and the theme parks that could be closed. We could buy them over the summer. I bet we could get some really cheap, buy them over the summer, and then when everything is over, we can open them back up. We can make tons of money that way. So I've already looked into a few, and there's one in Camden. There is one right in Mount Trace that I think we could get for a really good deal. So, so you agree that we should do that? What do you mean, do what? I am not Mabel. Did you not hear anything I just said? Oh, bless your heart. Okay, look, you just agreed two seconds ago that you think it would be a wonderful idea if we bought all the closed amusement parks and theme parks and water parks that we can. You did. You totally did. And I think that's a brilliant idea that you actually had. Okay. Well, look, look here. You see this little paper here? You don't have to worry about reading all that fine print. I know you don't have your good glasses on. Um, all this paper says is that you think I'm awesome and that you want to do all the things we just discussed, which you already said you totally do. And, and there might be a little bit of money in there about an annual payment to me, regardless of whether or not we stay together. No, you did agree to that. Are you going back on your word? I thought you were a man of your word, Carl. Well, okay. No, just take the pen. All right. Right down there. Sign there. Now flip it over. Mm-hmm. Sign there. Initial there. And there. Okay. 
Okay, now I got this. Now, this is just for signature practice. Right here, we have this just a blank piece of paper. It's not even anything important. Um, you see there's a signature line here. Just sign that right next to that uh, notary stamp, which is totally uh, not real. It's, uh, it's fake. It was, I was just doodling and it ended up looking like a notary seal. Just sign there. Oh, leave the witness line blank. That's some um, for somebody else to sign. And then initial down at the bottom. And there's another. See that? Sign that? Okay. Put your signature there too. See? That's, that's all it is. I'll take the pen. Just a little bit of signature practice. And you've got some practice doing your initials too. So that's, that's always a good thing. Well, thank you for that, Carl. You are so helpful. I tell you, I am, I am amazed at how generous and wonderful you are. And you always have the best ideas. Oh my goodness. You have a present for me? Oh, you're so sweet. Please tell me it's not pudding. It's pudding. Well, now I appreciate it. I don't really want any pudding. Oh, you were kidding. You're so funny. <laughs> what is it, Cheryl? He can get his sponge bath in a little bit. Why are you grinning? Is there something going on between you and Cheryl? Because I will not tolerate it. I will become very angry and litigious if you tell me. Oh, you were playing a trick on me. What was your trick? You, you have an actual surprise for me? What? <gasps> Is that real? Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh my goodness. That's even bigger than this one. Your love for me has grown. Look at that. Wow. I love it. And as soon as I can find someone to do it, I'm going to have a ring made of this stone. And then we'll get rid of this pitiful little thing right here. I'll have a proper ring, not that thing. I'm going to sleep with it every night. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. It's, um, it's, it's quite delightful. I am so happy right now. <gasps> this is the happiest I've been all day. <laughs> I started to have my doubts about there, about you for a minute. I started thinking you didn't love me. But now it's clear that you do. Oh, it's very clear. Mmm. It's excellent clarity. Nice. Thank you so much, Carl. Oh, I have a surprise for you too, but uh, I can't give it to you here. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. As soon as we get you home. I'm sure. Yeah, that'll be part of... Uh, Step one. Maybe we better wait though and make it part of step three. You know, remember I said I had a three point plan? Step one. Do you remember step one? No, my name is Charity. No, I'm not a candy stripe girl. What? Carl, we have such a an up and down relationship. I don't I don't even know about you some days. Brad have it. I have lost my Brad. <sighs> I was just thinking about Brad. Anyway, okay, maybe we better make that part of the third point, because I'm thinking, um, you know what? We don't want to rush into anything. You know, we get you home, you know, play some board games, take naps, and then spend lots of money. And then we're going to buy all the parks. And then, of course, we're going to have to go to the parks and ride the rides and do the slides and do all the fun things to show everybody that we're open again when we make lots of commercials for our new properties. So I'm going to need you to keep your energy levels up. Are you still doing your water aerobics? You are excellent. Cheryl, I don't even... Can you send her away? I don't think I... Do I have the authority to send you away? I didn't think so. Can you send her away? You're afraid of her. Well. He'll be ready for his bath shortly. Don't worry about it. 
See, the third point is when we just sit at home at Copperhead Estate or Bellamy Mansion, which I was not aware of until today. Gosh, you're full of surprises. Then we will just sit at home and watch the money just roll in. And that, my dear Carl, is when we will live happily ever after. <laughs> and of course, by then we will have scads of servants and assistants and people that, you know, will tell us how wonderful we are every day. And Brad will come back and, and everything will be like it was before. And then the world will remember again how wonderful I am. I mean, you know, how wonderful we are, of course, because we are the ultimate power couple of Camden County. And it's just that everybody is so distracted with this business that nobody can, even, they, they, they've forgotten and we have to remind them. Well, look, it's time for you to go get a sponge bath, apparently. He's coming. He's coming. Don't worry about it. Um, doesn't matter what's on this paper. There's nothing on this paper. None of your business. It's a love note. It's you telling me how much you love me. <laughs> With some signatures and initials and clauses and dollar amounts. All the things that really matter in life. Well, I think you look so dapper and handsome. It seems that you're holding up really well during this time of crisis, which is a real encouragement to me, sweetheart, because I can't tell you how much I've been thinking about you and worrying about you. And, you know, I would really hate that you had passed away suddenly in the night. Oh, how terrible would that be? All the money. Hmm. That would be awful. That would be so sad. So, I'm really glad to see that you're looking so good. Yeah. Hey, maybe you could take up jogging. Do they do bungee jumping here at the Winsome Willows? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. I think I should put that in the suggestion box. Totally. I could see you bungee jumping. I don't think it would snap your spine. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, not the first time. I think you'd be okay. And, and a snap spine is not really that bad anyway. They have ways to deal with that. Or maybe hang gliding. Yeah, or tightrope walking. You really get your heart rate up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what. You got your happy pills. I got my happy rock. And I got my happy papers. I would say this has been a very productive visit for everyone, including Cheryl, who will not stop coming in here. <laughs> you act like you own him. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody owns him all right, but it's not you. <laughs> I don't like her. I don't like you. In these times, we don't have time to beat around the bush. I have become very blunt in the current circumstances. I don't like you. <laughs> so I'm going to take my little, my little bauble here and um, my papers and um, I have to drive myself home. I know I'm so sad, but don't worry. You'll get that phone call. And that's going to help make everything okay. Knowing that I have that coming, it's going to keep my spirits up until I'm able to drive myself back to the estate. It's so tiresome. It's so hard. It is so much work taking care of all this by myself. I don't think anyone fully appreciates how hard that is. I mean, you don't hear about it on the news. Now that is a real travesty in the midst of these current circumstances. Don't you agree? I think it's sad. Well, I have to get my costume back on. So, please um, keep me in your thoughts because I have to don polyester and this. So... Yeah, that's, I mean, who's the real victim in all this? It's me. Well, <laughs> thank you again.
again so much, sweetheart. I love you so much. You and all of your money charm and you're so wonderful and you take such good care of me and I love it. Mm. Okay, sweet pea, while you're getting your sponge bath, just think of me, okay? I'm Charity. Yes, it is pretty. You bought it for me. I'll tell Mabel you said hello. Okay, darling. All right. Go enjoy your sponge bath. <laughs>